Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Um, today I want to show you how to do an installation for Equalizer APO in the piece of GUI. Uh, there's a lot of uh, how-tos out there to do it, but a lot of them are very complicated, very in-depth, and I just want to show you quick and dirty how to get this set up uh, quickly on your computer so you can start messing around, and then obviously there's more uh, detailed stuff that you can do from there. <coughs> Okay, we're going to start with the uh, the download of the files, and I will include links in the description for how to get to these. You start with the Equalizer APO. And I'm just going to hang out through the whole process so you guys can kind of see from beginning to end everything that goes into um, setting it up. So this is not the fastest computer in the world, so let me just take a minute. All right, so we are ready to go. We're going to start installing Equalizer APO here. I believe it's going to tell us to restart. Okay, so here's our first decision here. <clears throat> you want to make sure that this is installed for any of these options here, so that regardless of what you're using, um, the driver is installed correctly for them. So I'm just going to install it on all of them here. Um, my standard USB output device is the... Um, is the Apple uh, USB-C to 3.5 millimeter. Um, you know what, I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna unplug it for now. And I'm not gonna install that, and I'll show you how to add one later if the device that you have was not installed at the time that you were um, installing the software originally. So we'll just use those for now. Okay, we're gonna reboot later. And um, again, I'll include the link to this. So the APO, that, that's your backend for the equalizer, but what you actually interface with, what you use to control everything is the PC equalizer. This is what makes it easy to use. So we're also gonna install the PC um, equalizer APO, or PC equalizer interface for, uh, for the APO. And you'll see this is one there because I've already done this before, but I'm just going to do this one more time for you guys. I uninstalled it so we could do a fresh install here. Okay, we're three and a half minutes in, and this is a short, this is a not very fast computer, so I think we'll be able to actually hit the uh, the time frames. I was hoping to do this under five minutes for the setup, but this computer is not helping. Okay, yes, yes. Okay, the version to be installed, yes, we'll do the current version of it, um, basic settings, um, I'd say I'd like to use the full interface, um, if you want to use or remove any of the, uh, the preloaded equalizers, there are all options over here, I'll just leave it the way that it is, and um, I just left the rest of it um, kind of standard, so we will install. Okay, it's been installed. <clears throat> Equalizer APO wants to reset before it wants to work, so we'll go ahead and reboot the computer now, and I will be back in a minute. Okay, we are back on the, uh, the Windows desktop. As you can see now, the piece GUI is installed on the desktop. You'll just see this piece. 
You're not going to have to interface directly with the Equalizer APO. You just use Peace GUI from here on out. And as you'll remember, I disconnected one of my audio output devices. So we're going to look at what that looks like and how you just add it um, after the fact. So sometimes if your Windows uh, updates, then Peace will stop working and all you got to do is um, reinstall Equalizer APO at that point. But most of the time you don't have to have to do that. So I would leave that unchecked so it checks out for you. Okay, here is a basic 8-band EQ that you could use. Um, so again, you know, we're, we're five, we're less than 10 minutes in here and you're fully able to use this. Now let's say you had for you know you either bought a new audio output device or you had forgotten to do that on the front end of it. Um, if you look here, see it says all devices. Sometimes when this doesn't work, this is why. See I've got HDMI, I've got my speakers, but now I'm gonna plug in my new audio output device which is just a USB C Apple dongle. Uh, with a USB-A adapter on it. See, now I've got a new option here, and it says APO can be installed. If you just try to use that, but you haven't installed it here yet, this isn't going to work. So you got to do this. And unfortunately, you've got to reboot. So we'll be right back after the reboot. Okay, and we're back. We're going to update piece, or open piece again. This again is the um, the second reboot, and we're going to see. And now moving forward, I should have access to using that USB C output. So I'm going to click on. This is something you got to remember. If it's not working, this is the first place you want to check. Click on C. And everything that you have here will be seen. Usually, if this isn't working, you're not hearing anything. Or if you're hitting on off on this equalizer setting, it's not doing anything. It's because something got messed up. Usually, like if you use one thing and go back to something else, you plug and unplug them, that kind of thing. Sometimes it'll mess it up. And instead of saying already installed here, it'll be it'll say ready to install. And then you got to install it again and you got to reboot. But as long as you keep an eye on that, you should be in good shape. So now it should work. Uh, my five second overview of equalization. So this whole video is basically just to get this installed for you. It's not to give you an overview of like how to equalize everything really well. But the five second version of it is that you're 100 to 200. So these are like bass, sub bass. You can even do lower frequencies if you want to specifically add uh, sub bass. So like if you wanted to do that, you can just go into these EQ options. Like this is a standard 8-band EQ, but you can use it to mess with things. So say if we wanted to add one, we just hit this plus button here. And it comes back, and you see it's just got this, um, this empty slider over here at 1,000. So I could make that 50, which is you know, more sub-bass. And then I could boost it by however many dB I want. You just put it whatever number you want in here. So, um, so say if that was a setting that I wanted to do, I just hit enter. Now see it, it adjusts that. I could either do I could either do it by the slider here, or I can just type it in. And when I hit save here, I do not want to save it as the name that it was originally because that's a blank EQ that you might want to use for something else. So now I call it, you know, whatever EQ one. And now you see it's loaded and it's saved as that name. So I can do as many different EQs as I want to without messing with the original EQs. You just have to load something, change some settings, and when you click save, just name it something else. Um, one thing to keep in mind too when you adjust this is say, like say if you added 10 dB of, of bass here, the, the simplest thing to do is you're pre-amplifying. It took me a while to understand this. So you're giving it more more output than than is normal so to balance it out you have to go here and do the opposite so it doesn't create clipping in your music so the simplest way to do it is the highest the the db gain is here that you put in then you want to offset it here so not all of them together just whatever the highest one is so if your highest one is 10 go to here to your preamp and and go to you know the opposite of that so negative and again, anytime you want to save, because now my the name of this EQ is EQ1, now I can save it without renaming it. So I can just go in here and save it again. 
All right, so this will be the last part of the video. This is where you know you guys can play around with the sliders. You can move things around. You can do whatever you want with that. Um, that's kind of how I started, and it's fun. Just kind of slide them around, see what you got. If you're getting too much trouble, look in the stuff on the right side of the EQ settings. And if you're wanting more bass, you look in the stuff on the left side. And if you want to adjust the vocals um, and the guitars and things, it's in the middle. But most of the adjustments that you'll make, or at least my experience has been in the, the bass and in the higher areas to give it a little bit more airiness or to, to get rid of some of the, the, the muddiness, it tends to be in the, in the trouble in the bass. So I would concentrate on playing there. But Another good resource you have is um, one of the best resources in, <clears throat> in the audiophile community is Oratory1990 on Reddit. And I'll list um, a link to this as well. But essentially for any uh, headphone that you have, or, or the vast majority of them, there's going to be a link here for his settings for it. So, for instance, let's say DT770. And he even has details on, are they fresh ear pads? Are they old? What kind of EQ are you going to use? 10 band graphic EQ? Are they old um, ear pads? So let's just say that they're fresh ear pads. We're going to click on this one. If this brings you to a Google uh, link like it did me, I think there's an option. You just You just click on like bring me to original or something like that and it'll pop up. But if you don't, you just get a bunch of uh, random text on the screen that doesn't make any sense. For some reason, it doesn't load the PDFs correctly. So just you'll have one more step. Um, on this computer, I don't have that set up, so I don't have that problem. Um, but if you do have that issue, don't. it's nothing messed up on his side. It's just something to do with the way that Google loads it. And you could either download it, or I think there's a link that just says, like, bring me to original, and it'll bring you to here, and you can actually see all this stuff. Oratory 1990 is an audio engineer, so for the most part, he makes these changes uh, to get with the Harman curve, and, and a lot of times, like say on the, the Bayer Dynamic stuff, it'll tame down the treble, sometimes it'll add more bass. In general, it's going to give you a, a better sound for just about any headphone that, that you have, and you just need to scroll down to the bottom here, and where it says, you know, the, it'll say peak, low shelf, so that's your first thing you need to keep in mind, is make sure that you're adjusting that the frequency um, so that you're going to put that into that top area and the gain will be the next area and then the Q factor will, will be the next. So I'll show you how to uh, do that real quick. Okay, so um, when you're looking at that PDF, it may look a little intimidating, but it's actually not too bad. Keep in mind, whatever his preamp setting is, so you don't get clipping or else the EQ won't help you that much and it'll muddy up your sound. So make sure that you adjust your preamp here. And here's your frequencies. So here, let me see if I can put that in like half the, half the window here. Yeah. Oh, scrolled back up. Okay. So probably can't see that that well, but... Okay, so your first thing is, is, is it, you know, is it a peak, is it a low shelf? So you look at here, say peak, low pass, low shelf. So you make sure you select the, the right one there. Um, the next one is going to be the, uh, the frequency. So say if it's 41, you could change this. You just change that. And again, remember to save it when you're done with it. So um, you'll save this as a new EQ pre preset. I usually just use whatever the, the name of the headphone is for it so I can keep them all straight. And uh, so that's your, you know, your, uh, your frequency. Your gain is this one. So, you know, you just adjust it by whatever he says in there. And then the Q factor, make sure that you're adjusting that as well. So this will say like 0.25 or something here. Um, hey, just make sure, so on the low, the low shelf is a little tricky. If you if you do one of the shelf filters, you have to adjust the Q first. So say if I do this, and then I change this to the low shelf. You see how it grays it out? You can adjust it, but you have to adjust it before you change the filter to that. So just make sure that you're adjusting that filter first and you should be good. And if you mess it up, just change it back. You know, just change the filter type, change it, and then go back to your 
your low shelf and should be good. So once you've loaded in all these, should be good to go. You just save it. If you need to add more um, EQ uh, frequencies, again, you just come here and hit the plus. If you need less, you can hit the minus or you can just leave them at, at zero. Like if there's a bunch of frequencies here, you can just, as long as you leave these at zero, that it doesn't do anything. So you can just leave it that way as well. Or you can come here. Yeah, see, I right clicked on it and it just disappeared. So that's one way you can disable it as well. And then he's got links for all kinds of stuff and you can play around with it, see how you like it. Um, the reason I'm doing this video is that so many headphones out there are drastically off. And you don't realize it until you do this change. But EQ can make a gigantic difference in, in how these things sound. And I really advise that you guys get into it. And a lot of the videos are super intimidating. Like even for me, I'm in IT and I don't want to watch 45 minutes worth of detail on it. Like, but this... You know, 10, 15 minutes, you can be completely up and running and you'll be in good shape. So I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, if I can help with anything else, please uh, leave a comment below. Thank you.